Hi there everyone. Today we'll be going through another stream processing scenario where real-time data representing over 50,000 moving vehicles is read into FME, filtered using a geofence before being aggregated and analysed so useful information can be extracted from these large data volumes. With FME you can group and aggregate data in memory before it reaches the final right destination using our signature spatial processing capabilities. In this demonstration, we will calculate what the average speed is for all vehicles crossing a bridge in Vancouver. We need to calculate an average speed for both the northbound and southbound traffic, and we'll also obtain a count of how many vehicles cross the bridge. This value will update every 90 seconds. This will all be done uh, in memory without storing the data to disk prior to calculation. To do this, what we do is we read a simulated high volume vehicle stream in. We identify the vehicles on or close to the bridge using a geofence. Then for those vehicles, uh, we group them into a 90 second window for analysis and calculate the average speed for the vehicles crossing the bridge in that window. Let's take a look at the workspace now. Here we are in FME Workbench. Let's start by taking a look at the data sources. We've got two data sources. One is the geofence that covers the bridge. Here we've just hard-coded the geofence as geojson, and then we convert the geojson into geometry and reproject it. On the bottom row here, this is where we're reading in uh, all of the vehicle fleet tracking data. Uh, so we're simulating roughly 50,000 vehicles here, and we have a rate messages coming in at about two and a half thousand vehicles a second. In order to be able to handle those kind of volumes we need to run in stream mode. Uh, this is the mode uh, where when you run the workspace just runs indefinitely um, and it can handle very high volumes of data because it doesn't have to start up and shut down like it does in batch mode. In order to perform spatial processing on the incoming features this uh, non-spatial JSON here, you can see it's just a normal JSON object which contains this WKT. We need to extract that WKT, we do that with the JSON flattener, and then we replace the geometry here uh, of the well known text with an actual geometry object, and then we reproject the geometry to be in the same projection as the geofence. Once we have that, we can pass the geofence and the vehicle features into the spatial filter, and the spatial filter. It, every vehicle coming in is compared against the geofence and if it falls within the geofence it leads through this past um, port here. Once we've identified the vehicles that are on the bridge we can calculate the speed of each vehicle. To do this we use the time windower to group the data into 90 second windows. Here's the 90 second window. And so what this allows us to do is it allows us to assign IDs to all the features and then we can use those IDs to group the features together for processing. Since we cannot guarantee that incoming features are in the right order, what we then do is sort the data uh, grouping on both the vehicle ID and then the vehicle segment ID. So this ensures that each GPS log is in the same order in FME as it happened in real life and we need them to be in the right order to calculate the speed of each vehicle accurately. If we look at the sorter here you can see we're grouping by window ID and then we're sorting based on vehicle ID and vehicle segment ID. Okay so now we've got all of our features in the correct order what we're going to do now is calculate the, sp the speed of the vehicles. So each vehicle is going to have recorded multiple GPS points within that 90 second window. So what we're going to do is essentially measure the distance between each point, um, calculate the time between each point and then use that to calculate for each point the average speed of the vehicle at that time. So you can see the equation here, we're using an attribute creator, we're calculating the distance between the current feature and the next feature the time difference and then we're using uh, speed equals distance over time um, to calculate the speed of the vehicle for each point. 
What we do then is just filter out features where the adjacent feature does not share the same vehicle ID. Obviously, when we're jumping from one vehicle to the next, that first data point is going to be garbage, so we can just disregard it. Um, now we have many vehicles uh, and we have the speed of the vehicle at various locations on the bridge. So what we need to do next is create an average speed for each vehicle using the statistics calculator. So this time we're grouping on vehicle ID and window ID. And here we're just calculating an average uh, for the speed. So for the, each point has now a speed on it and we're just going to average that speed for each vehicle. The final thing we need to do is calculate the direction the vehicle is moving as at the moment we just have an average speed for all vehicles on the bridge. What we actually want is the northbound and southbound speed. To do this we build a line using a line builder. So again we're grouping by path ID and the window here, or the window start. Um, and then we're using the horizontal horizontal angle calculator from the FME hub to calculate the angle of direction. So this is a really neat transformer. Uh, you pass in the feature and it calculates the angle unit measure in degrees. Uh, and then we can use the attribute range mapper here to identify um, vehicles that are traveling roughly north and roughly south within five or ten degrees. So our workspace is now ready to run. Um, for most stream workflows, you'd want to publish it up to FME server and run it as a stream. You can run it in desktop, but obviously in stream mode, this workspace is going to run indefinitely. And the final step here in the, in the workspace is, is it calculates the average speed of all vehicles in a window for each direction. So we could at this point here actually just write out the average speed for each vehicle and save to a database. But this kind of higher level um, information here is essentially a real time view within 90 seconds showing the average speed of vehicles on the bridge, which is very useful information in rush hour. Thank you. Uh, be sure to follow Safe Software for more quick stream processing demos and check out the FME community for more in depth tutorials and webinars.